Hi, this is Christy from BirdMentor.com, where I teach advanced skills to beginning birders, and thanks for joining me today. So back in October, I was on a bird walk in the forests of Northwest Connecticut, and about halfway through the walk, we heard a song coming from up in the trees, kind of a little distance away. It was, it was I don't know, maybe, I'm not very good with distances, so just <laughs> a little ways away. And the person to my right called out and they said, I think that's an Eastern Phoebe. And then there was a gentleman standing the other side of me and he said, no, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's a chickadee. And so we stayed there for a few minutes until the rest of the group wanted to move on and go look at another bird. And by the time we left, neither person was convinced that they had made an incorrect call. How often does this happen to you, where you hear a song of a bird or a call, but you just can't figure out which bird it is? Pretty often, right? Yeah. Well, don't worry, because today I have four tips that will help you to know what to do the next time you hear one of these mysterious sounds. One important idea to keep in mind, and this may seem obvious to some of you, but you'd be surprised at how many people don't actually consider this. And that is that every single bird species has its own unique song and call. Now, it may not sound that way to you at first, but after a little practice, you'll get used to hearing them. Okay, tip number one. And this is literally the most important thing that you can do when you're trying to distinguish one call from another and that is to stop and just listen. Really, what I want you to do is just pause long enough, and sometimes it can actually even be a few minutes, where you just give yourself the chance to truly hear and contemplate the sound that you're listening to. I watch this happen all the time with birders when an unfamiliar sound appears. They instantly believe that they're not gonna be able to figure it out, so they just stop listening and they move on. Sometimes it's just hard to figure out the distinguishing features in the sounds, but they're there. So just give yourself a moment and really listen. This leads me to the next tip. And I'm gonna keep these super simple for you so they're gonna be easy to digest and remember. All right, tip number two is to listen for the tone of the call. Now, what exactly is the tone you might be wondering? Do you ever recall hearing your parents or maybe a teacher say something like, don't use that tone with me, young man or young lady. Yeah, so it's the inflection of a sound, or more technically, it's the quality, the pitch, and the strength of a sound. Okay, so here's a great example. There are places in the U.S. where the habitat for the gray catbird and the spotted towhee overlap. Now, each of these birds has what's known as a mew call, and that's a call they make when they're agitated. So let's first start by listening to the spotted towhee. Okay, nice. And now for the great catbird. Okay, so this call is actually the one that gave the catbird its name. If I had to speak about their tone, I'd say that the spotted towhee sounds as if it's asking a thoughtful question. So you can maybe think about like Romeo and Juliet, to be or not to be, right? <laughs> okay, and then you can think about the gray catbird, to me anyway, sounds like it's being squeezed and it's really annoyed by it. So you can just think of like what your cat might sound like if you were to squeeze it. <laughs> you can hit the back button if you want to right now, if you didn't pick up on the things that I noticed the first time around. And you might not even pick up on them the second time. So go slow with yourself and just see if maybe you can hear something that I didn't hear. Okay, so let's move on to tip number three. And that is to do your best to listen for phrases in the song or call. Now, remember the story of the chickadee and the Eastern Phoebe that I was telling earlier in the video? Yeah, so in just a moment, I'm gonna play the sound of each of their songs. And what I'd like you to do is do your best to listen for the number of phrases that you can hear in each of these songs. Let's listen first for the Phoebe. Great. And now the chickadee. Okay. So what do you think? Okay, let me break them down for you. So the Phoebe actually has two phrases. Phoebe, Phoebeo, 
Phoebe, Phoebeo, right? Whereas the chickadee, it has just one phrase. And some people think it says Phoebe, which is I think what confused the gentleman on the walk. So it says Phoebe, Phoebe, or some people say sweetie, sweetie, right? But that's just one. Can you hear that? Okay, so one other thing to keep in mind, and this might be a bit more advanced than you need to worry about right now, but just kind of keep it in the back of your mind. And that is that in the springtime, many birds don't actually sing their full songs. So it can be confusing. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> but if you just wait around a little while, then you can eventually hear them make their full song. It's kind of like they're starting to warm up, right? All right, just, just remember that. Don't worry about it right now. Just keep it in the back of your mind. So when our group heard that song earlier, we could have listened for the number of phrases that we were hearing in the song. And we would have had a pretty good sense of who we were hearing. But there was actually one other element that helped me to make my final call on who I was hearing that day. And that's tip number four, time of year. Only certain birds continue to sing throughout the late fall, the black capped chickadee being one of them. And fewer still will sing throughout the winter time in the northern parts of the country and the high elevation parts of our country. Now, do keep in mind that all birds will continue to make calls and alarms throughout the year, but only a handful actually continue to sing much past the end of summer. Okay, let's review. So first, what I want you to do is take the time to really listen to the call. Second, listen for the tone that you're hearing. Third, count the number of phrases you can hear. And finally, consider the time of year. Now, if you wanna go deeper into this topic and really begin to master the art of bird song identification, then head on over to birdmentor.com and sign up for my wait list for the bird song ID course. And I'll probably add a link below so you can just look for that as well. All right, thanks for joining me today. And until next time, please get out there and help spread some bird love in the world.